Come on. Andrew began research in biomechanics in 2010 as a postgraduate student and completed his PhD on technical performance in rugby in 2016. He has been lecturing biomechanics in undergraduates since 2017 and continues to conduct research in exercise physiology and movement analysis. Andrew's talk is entitled Qualitative Movement Analysis Using Mobile Devices. So over to you. Thank you very much, Nick. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to share my um, screen. Um, so what I'm going to have a look at is just a little bit of um, qualitative motion analysis. This is actually a task that I get my first year students to complete um, towards the end of their module uh, once we, they can apply some of the knowledge that they already have um, and then integrate some of the units that we have already conducted in our first year biomechanics course. So I do apologize if this is quite elementary, um, but our biomechanics that we present at UJ is at the first year level. Um, so it may seem hopefully um, very easy and um, it hopefully will be a wonderful little talk that we can get through. So one of the things that we found at UJ, particularly with our students, is that a high percentage of our students have mobile devices. Um, we did a quick survey um, prior, well, in fact, the first week of our hard lockdown, um, and it turns out that close to 90% of our students have access or have a mobile device um, that can record video, um, can view um, online data, um, and as well as obviously connect to the internet. Um, so one of the things that I thought of was instead of getting students to do what they normally do, which is just record everything, um, add filters, and then post it to the various social media websites, um, why not use that skill that they've developed um, through all their teenage years uh, to and try and apply some biomechanics? So we know that students are normally going to start with something quite elementary, applying filters, um, and then identifying various movements uh, in, in, a, in a motion or in a sporting sporting task. And we can see that that can actually be progressed into further analysis, such as your um, dart fish analysis, and then even your um, kinematic analysis um, when the students progress throughout the system. So the entire idea is to try and focus more on the left-hand side of the slide, uh, where we are able to work with the, the, the tools that the individuals already have, um, and then just apply the knowledge that they would have learned in their first year biomechanics um, in, in this particular task. So what I'm going to present is actually just the task that is presented to the students, and then I will continue with a, an example that I have provided. Um, and this, this example I normally give to my students, uh, just so that we can maintain a, a certain sense of quality um, across the board uh, so the students also are just following the the right processes we all know that with students uh, you know students won't attempt uh, any assignments if they don't have a rubric and if they don't have an example um, so it's normally the open wide process and a little spoon feed um, for the first couple of um, attempts and then towards the end of the year it's, it's welcome to the big bad world and they normally continue on their own so these are the instructions that obviously I'm going to be giving to them. Um, I want them to record a movement. Uh, before COVID, uh, we would normally get the students to uh, record a movement or to demonstrate a movement in front of the class. Uh, that would be uh, whatever's in vogue at the moment. So for 2020, the plan was to do an Olympic movement because we we're supposed to be having Olympics this year. Uh, so we would take something from the decathlon. Uh, they would have to either do a javelin throw, a discus, long jump, triple jump high jump, um, hurdles, uh, starting phase of sprints, continuous uh, running phase of sprints, uh, and, and so on. So they would normally either demonstrate that movement for us, or they would just record somebody participating um, in that action. And then the second part of the instructions would just be to analyze that movement. Um, and they have to focus specifically on a definition of the analysis. So are they going to be using a component or a composite approach? Uh, they need to define the skill, is it open, um, or closed skill? Is it going to be a discrete movement? Uh, is it going to be um, a continuous or a serial motion that's going to be described? And then very importantly, as we all know as biomechanists, um, the kinetic chain is this thing that we're all obsessed with. As they need to refer to the kinetic chain, normally give a definition and see how we can optimize that kinetic chain for performance um, or injury prevention. Then they would also just have to mention uh, something about balance and stability, the sensor of mass projections, um, how it can be maintained and optimized through the movement, and then something about contraction types as well as the agonist muscles of the movement. Once they have then analyzed that in the video, they would just simply have to upload their analysis with an audio overlay 
um, onto our discussion board that we have in our online platform. And then we turn it into a, effectively a YouTube video where our students can then have a look at the video and then obviously comment on it. Now the comments are obviously going to be moderated. It's not going to turn into that deep, deep dark place uh, known as the YouTube comment section, um, but it is going to just be a place where students can comment um, on the various motions that have been analyzed um, and then the breakdown of the movements into its particular phases. We find that most of our discussion from our students occurs around the a division of phases and how those phases have also just been uh, dissected and analyzed in a little bit more detail. So you'll see over there that the, the major outcome is just perform a comprehensive um, biomechanical analysis. And then very importantly is they have to integrate all of the knowledge that they've learned from the previous units. So up until this point, they would have already been taught the various approaches to uh, uh, kinematic analysis. Uh, they would have uh, had inf information about the skill types, the kinetic chain, uh, balance and stability, and very importantly, the musculoskeletal influences. So they would have had all of that information already. Um, at this stage, what they need to do is they need to just analyze the motion using all of that information uh, that they have already received. So this is just um, an example that I'm going to play through. Uh, which, which I did uh, a couple of months ago uh, to prepare my students for their, their, their little course. So effectively what they'll do is they're just gonna record the motion. Um, I, I've taken a YouTube clip and then just um, done some work on that, but our students are normally always going to just analyze their own motion uh, when they can record either a classmate or a friend just completing the movement. And then they'll break it down in simple overlays um, using, using the various apps that they all have access to. So if we just play through this video, we'll be able to see that I've taken a very good javelin attempt. We break it down into a run-up phase, an approach phase, um, pull back, a throw phase, and then obviously the follow-through. So what they would, the students would be expected to do is as we are speaking through it, they'll be saying, okay, the individual is going to be running up. Um, if we only look at the upper body aspect of the individual, so the shoulder blades, the shoulder girdle, as well as the arms, uh, those remain quite stationary during the movement. Um, we remember that this is going to be at a first year level, so the level, the depth of analysis is going to be quite shallow. Um, then as the run-up continues, we then go into the approach phase where we can get the pullback of the um, of the uh, shoulder girdle and the shoulder blade as they then load up those muscles. Uh, the individual then goes into the throwing sequence where we can get the foot plant and we can break it down into those various phases. Um, and they'll talk about how the, the shoulder blade is then going to go through the various uh, range of motion uh, and then identify any of the agonist and antagonist muscles. So some of the things that we would be looking at um, is just going to be how they've broken the phases down of the movement and then how they're going to be analyzing what's happening at each stage of that analysis. Um, very importantly, we, we need to, especially for the musculoskeletal side, uh, they need to identify the um, movements that are occurring along the various planes, uh, flexion, extension, and, and so on. Um, and then also very importantly is to identify the agonist muscles and specifically mention something about the stretch shortening cycle. So that's something that at first year level, we really stress with our students, um, is just the storage as well as the recoil of um, potential elastic energy. Uh, from the various muscle tissues. So once that has been uploaded um, to our online discussion, uh, we will then moderate everything that occurs within that discussion board, um, make sure that students are just being polite um, as well as constructive in, in the, the feedback they're giving to one another. And we do assign marks to a couple of the discussion points that have to be uploaded online. Um, the students particularly like these types of things um, because I think it's, it gives them a little outlet not only to to analyze a sporting thing that they enjoy, um, but then also just to give a little bit of feedback to one another in, in the um, movements that they have then uh, reported. From an instructor's point of view, uh, what we do is we apply just a simple rubric. Um, the rubric is always going to be available to the students and we can simply then just go across the various columns and assign the marks as, as have been defined. Uh, so the rubric that I'm just showing here is quite um, quite simplified. Uh, we do add a little bit more complexities depending on um, how much information we require from the students. And then obviously as, as the years progress uh, from first year onwards, we, we become a little bit, um, we go into a little bit more detail with the various components that we are looking for. So as you can see from the rubric, we can uh, assign various marks to the, the various uh, outputs that the students have given. Um, and then 
once they have their final mark, then we normally just get the, the presentation to, to have so many likes on the discussion board. Um, and we really try and make it almost like a, a YouTube type environment uh, where we, we uh, try and promote individuals to, to once again, you know, promote their own little videos. Um, what we have noticed is a lot of our students not only upload things like this just to the discussion board, um, but a lot of our students as well put, put, put these types of videos onto things like Instagram, um, get, get a little social brag out there, um, which, which I think is, is, is actually quite amazing uh, that they'd be quite proud of their work to actually do something like that. So that's, that's pretty much just our approach. We've moved now to our online platform. Um, previously, what we just used to do is the individuals would um, present this in front of the class, um, but we normally just have a, a very nice live Skype session um, or a collaborate session as we have at, at UJ. Uh, where the students can then just share their presentations uh, live if they want to. Alternatively, we can just play their, um, uh, their videos as they have uploaded. So that's pretty much just uh, summarizes my little uh, presentation of our task that we give to our students. Um, I do hope that everybody uh, was listening and enjoyed it. So this is the one thing about our online system is we, we never really know who's listening. Um, so I do thank you all, all for joining um, and, and hopefully we'll enjoy the talks that follow. Thanks so much, Andrew. There's one question for you uh, from Mark Kramer. Do you make any? Do you make use of any specific mobile apps? Example, Tidal. And does the operating system matter much? Example, Android versus um, EOS. Uh, no, so we don't. We don't specify any um, app. I do mention that that Huddle is a free. Um, app that they can use if they want to go into a little bit more, more depth. So if they want to then go uh, with a different biomechanical approach and then actually get the actual angles, um, then Huddle is a, a free tool that they can use. Um, if they want to spend a couple of US dollars, they can also buy the um, Dartfish mobile. Um, but obviously, I just want students to, to break everything down into the phases and not really go into that depth of analysis. Uh, when it comes to the operating system, uh, if you're using Apple or Android, it really doesn't matter. Um, in fact, most of the phones and mobile devices have such good camera qualities these days um, that it would put most broadcasters to shame. Um, so I think from that point of view, it really doesn't matter what they're using. Great. Thanks so much, Andrew.